Good morning, everyone. Judy Maggio here. Thanks for watching Decibel Dialogue. And this month, our focus is on valuing veterans. And we have brought two people on the front lines, not only veterans, but also helping veterans uh, find work, maintain jobs, and helping families of veterans. So I first want to introduce Margaret Watson. She goes by Maggie. Maggie is the Veterans Career Advisor at the Texas Veterans Commission. And then we have Chastity Bingley, and you have a very long title. It is Central Texas Local Veteran Employer Liaison Public Entity. That's it. <laughs> so welcome to both of Thank you. you. Thank you. First so of all, tell us about your service in the military. I joined the Army two days after my 17th birthday. I retired of August of 2018. Um, I had a blended career through the Guard, active duty, uh, Indiana, Pennsylvania Guard, Indiana Guard, Texas Guard, um, dual military. My husband's still in the Army now. He's looking to retire of August of next year. He's a scout. Um, I went to Afghanistan, or excuse me, Afghanistan in 02, Iraq 03, and then I did four tours in Korea. This has been so. your whole adult life. Yes. Your entire uh, adult yeah, life. I'll be 39 next Tuesday, so mm -hmm. that's all I know. Chastity, tell us about your career so in the military. So somewhat the same, um, joined in 18, at 18 years old. Uh, first duty station was Savannah, Georgia, Hane Amri Alfield. Um, three, four deployments, um, Mosul, Iraq, and I have two stations overseas in Germany and one in Korea. I am also was dual military. My husband retired prior to me so he could take care of the kiddos. And I just recently retired April 1st of this year. And you say retired, meaning you are no longer active in the military, but you're mm -hmm. also working every single day to help other veterans. So first of all, you're both with the Texas Veterans Commission, and I think a lot of civilians may not know exactly what that group does. So explain what the Texas Veterans Commission does for our veterans in our state. Well, we have eight programs. Our largest program is Claims and Counseling. Um, claims and Counseling, they're located all over the state of Texas, and they help veterans with their claims and survivors with the pension programs and any survivor benefits that the veteran may have left them. Um, Chastity and I are on the other program with Employment Services. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm located on Fort Hood. Um, the state of Texas is very unique in our services. We like to get you employed before you hit the unemployment. Yes. So when you're transitioning out of the military, no other state does what we do in the state of Texas with getting employment prior to separation. So every state has their own model. And I truly believe that the state of Texas has the best, best model. model. Very much We so. can definitely say yeah. that. Yeah. So we're actually both on Fort Hood. Um, mm -hmm. So whereas Margaret would deal with the veterans, I will deal with the employers. So we're actually like matchmaker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you find the people and she, you find yeah. the employers, employers yes. she, she finds, finds me the people. The people. Yes. And it's, it's a great team. Um, our office are right next door. So we find each other. Um, I ear hustle in her conversation she does. a lot. <laughs> she come running in. <laughs> it's like, hey, I got a job for you. Come see me directly after this. And we're excited. Mm -hmm. um, I love the fact that we're both partnered together on Fort Hood. Um, we're capturing transitioning soldiers. Being a newly retiree, I know exactly how it feels to transition out of the military and be in that un that unfamiliar yeah. space of yeah. not having a job, yeah. the unknown, um, especially having children. You have your family. My husband retired. He stayed at home. And so you're basically just trying to find what's next. Right. And so... People like Maggie are like God sent, to be very oh, honest, yeah. because I listen to her as she's talking to veterans, and I'm like, where was she when I was retiring out of the military? And she's helping them through every portion. And the only thing I'm doing is like, hey, you must hire veterans. Do you know what we bring to You're the team? You're advocating with the employers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I know that veterans face unique challenges, but they also bring this unique skill set yes. to jobs. What are some of the barriers that you think veterans face when they're ready to get back into the workforce, when well, the, they come home? The largest barrier that I see with them this in front of me is translating their military skills mm -hmm. into the civilian world. And the, the civilian employer is trying to understand what we did in the military. Um, one of my right. girlfriends shared a meme with me yesterday. I love memes. Memes are fun. <laughs> and it breaks the ice. So it was a meme of a tank, and the tank was at the gas station, and the a gas attendant says, fill it up, I want a full tank. 
So it was a gas station. So you're thinking, well, fill up the tank. I want a full tank. So I told her I was going to use this in uh, one of my slide decks. So the, what, is the, what does that all mean? You know, what, is, what sense does that make to you? So if I put in my, my resume, I, I want um, a full tank. What does that mean? So I, would it be with all the gear or is it just fuel? You know, you're probably thinking, what does this mean, Margaret? Yeah, this makes no sense, you know? So but is it a full, need to yeah, understand exactly. This, yes. Yeah, so know? it's kind of funny. And if I would put that in my slide deck, we probably would have got a laugh out of it. And you're still like, is she going to make a point out of this? <laughs> so it, it's not, it's a tank. It's a, it's a heavy piece of equipment, not actual fuel cell, mm. you know? So it, it's no play of words and how, and on, um, on Wednesday at Texas A&M, we are having two events, uh, Centurion Military Alliance, and which is CMA. Uh, registration can be found on LinkedIn, uh, excuse Eventbrite. me, on Eventbrite. Mm -hmm. And during that same time, uh, Michael Quinn, he was the voice of LinkedIn in 2018. He has a lot of experience and he's uh, home fat. He is coming out and he's going to teach us oh, as wow. veterans for what experience that he has, which is there's no one better to teach us is our, yes. ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he is going to show us how to use LinkedIn to, to master that, to reach oh, out how, to those. What a, yeah. what a great gift and, that will and be. And to do that. So how do we reach out to employers? And Chastity going out to these employers saying, hey, let us teach you how to understand what a full tank is, yeah. you know, in a sense. So you brought so, it full circle. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I know that November is probably your busiest month with Veterans Day. Tell us about the wide array of activities just the two of you are involved in. Yeah, Ooh. today's a big day too. Today's a big day. So we have Just for Success that's here in Austin. Mm -hmm. um, great yeah. group that great provides group. Uh, women. gently used clothing that women yes. have donated to women who are getting out in the workforce, maybe for the first time. Yeah. Correct. And so we have our veterans, we have our military spouses um, that are coming in. We have workshops that are going on. So it's not just so much as dressing for success, even though that's a very important part. Because if you're dressed right, when you're going in and you're doing that interview, mm -hmm. you have that positive, you have mm -hmm. that energy about you to walk into a room. It's all about that first five seconds of appearance. But we want to also gear them, um, give them other tools to put in their toolkit. Interviewing skills. Interviewing and skills, like that. Yeah. workshops, resume workshops. And so it's all leading up to our biggest event, yes. which is Red, Whiting You. That's happening on the 7th. Yes. So we have our Dress for Success. We have our Centurion Military um, Alliance. Alliance. Yes. And then we have the LinkedIn workshop. And we also have workshops throughout Texas. Mm -hmm. For every workforce, they have resume building, interview skills, everything that's preparing us all for this huge day, which is on the 7th, and it's Red, Whiting You, yes. which is a huge military hiring event for our transitioning soldiers, our veterans, military spouses, dependents. So how do you find out about all this? Yes, People, that was yes. my next question. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm sure there are veterans or family members of veterans going, I, I want my person to know yeah. about these great things. So if you just go to your good old Google machine or whatever search mm -hmm. engine you choose yeah. to use, um, if you just Google Texas Veterans Commission, um, you go to our website, mm -hmm. and at the bottom of it, our calendar is there. It's all color-coded. Be very careful. Texas is huge. We have yes. a lot going on, so definitely check uh, Don't where get the location. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, our comms department does a great job keeping up with that, and there is it's, it's a lot of the times it's stacked of all the events that are on there. Uh, we use Eventbrite as a pretty cool website and it populates for us. It's a free website mm -hmm. and uh, you can register for it and it'll tell you everything that's going on throughout the state of Texas. If you could deliver a message to employers about the importance of hiring veterans, what would that be, Chastity? Interview them. Um, oh gosh, yes. it wasn't you, it was your turn. <laughs> Interview them. just give us a chance. Interview us. So I just feel that as an employer, if you're missing, you're really missing out on a great group of people. As soldiers, when you join, you're you're branching into a, a environment, no matter what branch it is. But when you're getting ready to transition, oh, what skills you have! So you're up early. You're always on time, and on time for us is five minutes to ten minutes prior to the, <laughs> the actual start time. That's so you guys had to wait on me today. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> Because we're used to it. It gives us time yeah, yeah. to, we prepare for traffic. Yeah. And so, um, and not, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's teasing. But not only um, are we on time, so we're flexible. We're flexible with our schedules. We work very well under pressure. So, whereas you may have your typical civilian um, that has an overload, 
we're working at our that's our moment you're multitasking yes. experts yes mm -hmm. that's that like under pressure is actually our moment we're yeah. always looking for ways to improve yes. um, we never settle right and so I just think that those are great qualities you to bet. bring to a team mm -hmm. and that's that's my part that's where I come in I'm always expressing to those employers hey these are great tools, great assets that you can bring to your organization. The biggest thing for us as veterans, what we're trying to figure out, what do we want to do when we grow up? Yeah. As you transition out, you're going, mm -hmm. some people want to stay in there, some veterans want to stay in their military, um, their job or mm -hmm. their MOS. Um, and others and what want is to MOS? Military Occupational Specialty. Okay. Specialty. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. translate for me civilians, yes. these things. And Acronyms. so it's basically your job is what you've done in the military. So for 20 years, I was a mechanic. Um, I've also been an instructor. I've also mm -hmm. been in operations. And so I have a background in safety. And so what do you want to do when you get out? That was my hardest decision. And my biggest thing was I wanted to give back to my counterparts, my veterans. I love, I, it was uncomfortable for me to be in that transition. And so to assist another veteran to be comfortable with that transition was actually like my mission. So now you used a uh, U.S. Chamber of Commerce Hiring Our Heroes program. Yes. That's a really Thank good you. career skills program for you. So, so that's a national program? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So Hiring Our Heroes was just at a perfect time. Um, Sam Blanks, who works for the Texas Workforce Commission. Under the Texas Veteran Leadership Program. That's okay. a state program. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, he introduced me to Hiring Our Heroes, and I was like, oh, okay, it's an internship. And that's a great way for employers also to gain insight to veterans. I call it the dating game because you date <laughs> too. for a certain amount of time, and at the end of the, the date, I'm looking for an offer, and, but you get an opportunity to kind of see how I work mm -hmm. in your team for 12 weeks, up to 12 weeks. Everybody should yes. be able to do that, so the, right? The, what, what happens great is idea. the military pays their wages, like she's still in the military, but they do the internship. So the employer gets the free labor. Yes. And I hate to use that term. It's at no cost to at your no, employers. Yeah. <laughs> so, and yeah. then if the employer chooses to give the uh, soldier, veteran, the yeah. veteran, the job, then they bring them on as a full-time full -time. employee. So we had Chastity talk about what she wants employers to know about hiring veterans. What do you want veterans to know uh, through your lens uh, about entering the workforce? But they have a lot of skills to bring. You know, I've had so many veterans and transitioning service members, members sitting in front of me they yesterday I had a young veteran um, he got out of the military with no plan um, he had three young children the his spouse didn't work which he just knew he wanted out of the military and um, today he uh, doesn't know if he wants to be a radiological technician um, a respiratory therapist a dental hygienist or going to IT. There's workforce grant money out there. He has all these great skills, yes. right? Yes, and he can do whatever he wants. And he's really excited right now. So he has six months of grant money to go out there and do it. And he can collect his unemployment to pay his wages. He will have um, a VA compensation money to back that up. Um, and employment will come right along with that because the workforce is going to pay for that education for uh, careers that are in demand. So they're not going to pay for uh, careers that there's, there's right. no, there's but no demand. But when you talk about skilled trades and healthcare industry, mm -hmm. those are in demand mm -hmm. right Absolutely. now. Absolutely, yes. yes. So they studied, so what the workforce does is they study the, the jobs that are in demand and then they pay for those careers for do that. And they have soldiers and veterans have four years to use that grant the money. National Dislocated mm -hmm. Grant money. And even with, on so specifically speaking on Fort Hood, the Hiring Our Heroes U.S. Chamber of Commerce program is a career skills program. So if you separate from a different military installation and you move to Central Texas, you have two years to go back to Fort Hood and say, I want to use this program. So they have, there's so many opportunities. And another thing I love to do is, you know, Chastity's right next door to me in an office, and I work at the Soldier and Family Assistance Center. So a lot of the soldiers I see are going through a medical evaluation board process. The military has identified them for separation due to a medical condition. I do see a lot of retirees too. Mm -hmm. So they're identified 24 months earlier in their career that they're gonna separate. So they have a plan and I, I say, okay, you wanna be working by this day. I hit milestones. So we use um, 
a program called Salesforce is a oh, database. Yeah, Salesforce, okay, of course, very yeah. large program, mm -hmm. and we have per TVC has purchased partial a uh, program on this, so they will get an email. You need to go here to do this. They email me back. I did this. I met with this employer. I applied. Um, Eric Putt. He's a um, counterpart mm -hmm. like Chastity, but he's here in the Round, um, round, round Rock, Rock area, area, and he will source that employer also. So there's um, Gerald Gould. There's, and there's a great not, network in place. I think oh, a lot of people don't realize because mm -hmm. this yes. is for veterans. And, and Governor Abbott supports our program like you you would not believe. Oh, our governor is great. And you know, and at the beginning of this conversation, we talked about the different programs. Yeah. So there's eight programs. We have claims and counseling, employment. We have education. Uh, we have our Fund for Veterans Assistance mm -hmm. Program. So everybody, when you get your Texas driver's license or you renew your registration, Social. it gives you an option to donate to I've veterans. I've seen that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. There is another thing you can do. So I think it was um, last Monday when we did our the, the round table. Mm -hmm. It was a 10-year anniversary. You'll be at the end of the month. Yeah. yeah. It was a 10-year anniversary of the Fund for Veterans Assistance mm -hmm. that the lottery uh, gave back to that. And they did a tour throughout the mm -hmm. state of Texas, the $23 million was given back to Texas veterans. So if you buy a lottery ticket, you know, as a gift or for fun or whatever, you know, ask for veterans cash. And the proceeds, a portion of those proceeds go, go back, back to, to veterans, veterans yeah, within we, the state of Texas. And this is such important information to give. There are little things that we can all do to show veterans that they're valued, and yeah. that's, that's our theme this month. Final question for you guys, and we talked a little bit about that in the roundtable that, that will be airing on uh, November 22nd at 7.30 on that Friday night. Uh, we sat down with Maggie and four other veterans of, from different conflicts, different oh, perspectives. It was really, it was really interesting. interesting. It, was, it was. But one thing we talked about was the unique perspective you have on your military service as a female, because I think that people don't realize that Sometimes women face some obstacles that men don't in the military. Yes. Could we talk just a little bit about that before we let you guys go to Dress for Success? You know, I brought it up yesterday, yesterday. in a brief, and the brief was full of women, and there was two men in this brief, <laughs> and I thought to myself, maybe I shouldn't have said that. You know, Mother Nature comes to us every, every month, <laughs> and I think I could have stated it a little different. A little I think that was a little more tactful. We don't think about that we, as a woman, mm -hmm. but when I went to Iraq, in 03, when we were pushing forward, I had to pack tampons yeah. and pads. And yeah. that's not something you would think about going to war. Right. And um, But in it's 03, a reality. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. It is. And, and hair ties and yeah. gel. Like, yeah. because, so when I was in Iraq in 03, I just kept my hair wrapped so I didn't have to the wash it. And to go to the bathroom, number two. And I made the best of guy friends to hold that poncho for me to dig that hole. Yeah. I tell you what, yeah. I still keep in touch with those <laughs> yeah. guys because I mean that it, it's it's off color and it's gross, but we all do it. Um, right. Yeah. To, to think it's the that, reality yeah. of being in a conflict. Yeah. You know, being at yeah. war. Yeah. As a female. Yeah. And that those those privacies are gone, and to have that battle buddy or that sister next to you who you're going to trust and yeah. to be with. Um, so talk about the fact that both of us are in male-dominated MLS. Oh yes, we are. We're both mechanics. Um, I had a, I had a soldier spit in my face <laughs> just because I asked him to pick up some equipment, and I it was a big, gross one. And I was like, Ugh. you know, I wiped it off my face, and I was like, are you are you kidding me? You would never spit in in a male sergeant's face like that. And and he it was in Korea, and the the they they came around the corner like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? And I'm like. Just get them out of my face. Like, there's nothing I'm gonna do. Just yeah. Chastity, you have some stories too. I mean. oh, we, we yeah. have some challenges. I think the biggest challenge for me was um, progressing in the military and deciding to have a family. <gasps> and so I actually waited. Um, so I made first sergeant, which is one level above, one level next to the yeah, last, the top, the yeah. top rank yeah. that we can go, which is sergeant major. Mm -hmm. And I made E8, and I was like. I want a family. I am 35 years old, I'm getting older, mm -hmm. and I definitely want to have something to pass on to my children. And me and my husband went through a, a huge journey of trying to have kids. And the military, as females, we put a lot of stress on our body. And it sometimes <laughs> deterred to where, you know, we're, we're unable to have kids. So we struggled with that. But luckily, by, by the grace of God, we were able to have our children. 
And to make that decision on whether or not I wanted to continue my military career and or be a mom. And for females, that's a very hard decision. Um, do yeah. I want to be a mom? Do I want to continue to lead soldiers? And so I had my son and my husband retired to stay at home and be a dad, which is a great adventure for him because that's more of a, a female yeah. role. You know, society p poses that as a female role. And he did an absolute great job at it as I continued in the workforce of being a soldier. And then I realized that he was getting some of the stuff that I wanted. And my son <laughs> watched me, saw my son do his first steps, and that was hard for me. Yeah. And then we got lucky, we got pregnant again. And I was like, yeah, it's time to say, it's time to hang up the boots and retire. And that was the biggest challenge for me. Um, I have my mentors, when we got ready to make this decision, I contacted my mentors and they were like, you're making a huge mistake. And I'm like, you're a male, your kids are grown. You know, when you had your kids, your wife got out. Mm -hmm. um, I yep. was lucky my husband got out. Um, he had 23 years in and I still had, I had 17 years when my son was born. And I was like, who throws 17 years away, yeah. you know, in order to just do 20 so you're able to say you officially retired out of the military. And so I had a great husband and he supported me wholeheartedly and I could have done it without him. And so those are some of the challenges. Every every female mm -hmm. veteran or every female soldier in the military is not as blessed as I was um, to have a supporting spouse. If you're dual military, it's extra hard depending because you're competitive in yeah. your career fields. But they also probably understand the stress of Absolutely. being yes. in the military. Yes. So. And so when you have civilian yeah. spouses. I, I never had a chance to have kids. Yeah. So. And it's it's a choice yeah. that you you literally yeah. 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 that just like other careers absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. and when you're when you're alpha female and your career focus those right. are some of the things we that you have to kind of wait yeah, yeah. Hard. <laughs> you know? so finally so many great events coming up that will help us all help value veterans yes. Go through them again and tell people where they can find the list. Well, we're today, today is Dress for Success yes. and is here. Um, we do it every quarter. So if you miss today, you can get a oh, hold of us. Oh, every quarter you guys yes. have to Dress for Success. Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, the um, Rebecca Dark at um, Dress for Success here in Austin, you can either call Dress for Success and um, they also can be find, uh, found on the TVC website. Mm -hmm. We're going to set the dates for the next year mm -hmm. today. So really the TVC website's where everybody needs yeah, to go. Yeah, TVC, yes, our comms. It, it's, 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 our, uh, it's our flagpole that is the best place to find all of our information as most current. And then t tomorrow is going to be the Centurion Military Alliance. Mm -hmm. And, the um, LinkedIn Luncheon. LinkedIn alarm. Luncheon. Mm -hmm. well, that's just the USO. Mm -hmm. And um, they're very active. And then on Thursday is going to be the Red, Red Wedding U, U, a statewide hiring event. And that is uh, all the local workforces. And that's going to be at 30 different locations. Yes. And then in the afternoon at Texas Central Texas A&M. We have the we, Veterans Appreciation Day. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're doing a Veterans Benefit Expo mm -hmm. for that. And then uh, and there's so many great yeah, veteran appreciation yes. events going on throughout yes. Central and then, Texas and leading parades, up to Veterans Day absolutely. and on Veterans Day yes, yes, as well. So. And as veterans, we're greatly appreciated. We love the state of Texas. That is one of the reasons why me and my husband, we decided to retire here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The state of Texas is great for veterans. They are so welcoming. They support their troops, whether in uniform or out of uniform. And mm -hmm. so... Well, we thank you both for your service. Thank you, Judy. Thank, you. thank you both for sharing your journeys with us Absolutely. today. And good luck, Dress for Success. I hope you have lots of folks there who are learning how to interview and put their best foot forward as they interview for jobs. Thanks for work, the work that you do on behalf of all thank the veterans. You. Thank, you. thank you. And thank you all for sharing a little bit of your morning with us. Go out and make it a great day. Mm -hmm.